Rather be eating turkey than shopping, I think. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Victoria. Mm, absolutely. Uh, meanwhile, in Brisbane, Australia, they are clearing up after the worst storm to hit the city in decades, with winds of more than 100 miles an hour and hailstones the size of tennis balls. One resident described the experience as apocalyptic. More details from Nick Childs. This is BBC News coming up in the next few minutes. Who knew there was a Paddington Bear film? Because it's had very little publicity, I think, isn't it? This is extraordinary. <laughs> I, I feel like I hardly know about it. We even had that hue in the other day. Extraordinary. Let's uh, catch up with the weather right now, shall we? And I'm Jane Hill. Also in the next hour, Brisbane is hit by a freak storm. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to BBC News. So, our big story, the main story here today, the Prime Minister has set out plans to curb tax and welfare benefits paid to migrant workers from the EU. Mr Cameron said no one should come to work in Britain without having a job offer first. But he conceded that many of his plans could only be implemented following negotiations with Europe. The European Commission says the proposals will be calmly considered. Well, here are David Cameron's main proposals. They are, of course, dependent on him remaining in power after the May general election. Uh, the first suggestion, stopping EU migrants from claiming in-work benefits, such as tax credits, until they've been in this country for four years. Stopping migrants claiming child benefit and tax credits for children who aren't in the UK. And preventing access to social housing, again, for four years. And while the Prime Minister didn't announce any plans to cap immigration, he did say these changes would be an absolute requirement in his negotiation with the European Union. Union. He finished by saying that if he succeeds in his talks with Europe, he'll campaign to keep this country in a reformed EU. But he warned that if our concerns fall on deaf ears, as he put it, we can't put our relationship with the EU on a better footing, then of course I rule nothing out. We'll be talking in a moment to Liam Fox. First though, let's get details from our political correspondent, Carol Walker. Well, as promised, let's talk to the Conservative MP, former Defence Secretary, of course, Liam Fox, who joins us from Bristol. Very good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, a, a number of analysts have been making the point today that actually, if you listen to the overall scope of this speech, it was really David Cameron being very pro-EU, saying we can reform, we can make it work, we should stay at the heart of Europe. Is that your take on it? Lots of, uh, uh, lots of uh, academics, though, saying there is no suggestion that uh, tr putting that four-year cap on that you mentioned is actually going to dissuade people from coming. It's not going to discourage them. There's absolutely no proof that it would do that. And if that's what he wants to achieve with that policy, then isn't he setting up a policy that is almost doomed to fail? They're saying that people aren't coming here because of the benefit system. It's not what's attracting them. What's attracting them is that there are jobs and they come here to work and that's, that's their raison d'etre for being here. Yeah, so, well, maybe more to discuss there. Uh, just a final thought. Has he had done enough with this to, to, to calm the, the Eurosceptics in the party? Liam Fox, thanks very much for joining us there from Bristol. Thank you. Well, we'll stay with this and uh, get more from our chief political correspondent, Vicky Young, who's getting reaction to all of this. Vicky. Vicky, thank you. Vicky Young. And let's uh, get reaction from Europe. Let's go to Berlin. Our correspondent there is Jenny Hill. Uh, to what extent is this being uh, talked about and what reaction are you seeing there, Jenny? Absolutely. Thank you very much. It's uh, 19 minutes past four, a reminder of today's headlines. Thanks, Carthy. See you a little bit later. Now, there is still very nearly four weeks to Christmas, but frenzied shopping, I'm afraid, is underway. Today is now apparently called Black Friday in this country. It's a huge day for discounts in America, and now it's becoming part of the run-up to Christmas here as well. Today's bargains have led to long queues and some hot tempers. A warning that John Brain's report contains flash photography. Now, they have been uh, cleaning up in Brisbane in Australia after the worst storm to hit the city in decades, with winds of more than 100 miles an hour and hailstones the size of tennis balls. One resident described the experience as apocalyptic. Here's Nick Childs. Nothing quite like that. It's, uh, terrifying over here, I don't think. That's what we hope. Let's find out from Darren Bett. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. This is BBC News with Tim Wilcox and Jane Hill. Our main headlines at exactly half past four. 
Well, great news for Andy Murray. Let's catch up on that and all the other sport. Um, here's Carthy. Hello. I did think it sounded like a lot of new rules, Carthy, I have to say. And I, I'm not too sure about it at this stage, but mm, I guess we've got we have 16 to see. days to find out. Okay. <laughs> Even I, by then, might have been able to do that. Thank you very much, Thanks, uh, Carthy. Carthy. See you later. Uh, now, let's talk more, as promised, about our main story. David Cameron's much-anticipated speech about immigration. The Prime Minister setting out measures designed to restrict benefit payments to migrants from the European Union in the hope that the numbers coming to the UK will fall, of course. That's the ambition. Let's talk to Dr John Fox, who joins me from Bristol. He's a senior lecturer on sociology and migration at the University of Bristol. Very good evening to you. Hello. So we know the, the, the essential contention from David Cameron is that this four-year issue will, he hopes, discourage people from coming. They'll only come if they have a job offer, all those sort of issues. Is it going to work? All those stats that you've just talked about, mm. um, politicians have to have access to that data. They must know this. Therefore, are these announcements today driven by the fact that they must feel that this is electorally popular or it's what the electorate wants to hear so, sorry to hurry but i'm just thinking one one final point though i mean there, there clearly are despite all of that there clearly are some parts of the country where people have concerns that the infrastructure simply cannot cope with the number of people living in any given area it's not even relevant almost where these people are from but if there's too many people in a, a small area there's not enough school places you can't get an appointment at the gp that does cause social tension doesn't it and and is that really what politicians of any color should be should be trying to address is it meant to be like that let's hope the sound works better when the film actually uh, yeah. comes out let's just speak to lisa mazimba this is the first one what for nearly 10 years isn't it uh, so <laughs> they, so they have to kind of give people just enough to keep the interest going without just getting people swamped with oh i've had enough what do you think of the trailer yeah. just need yes. to improve the sound and we're there <laughs> okay thank you very much lisa. thanks lisa <laughs> Well, on that note, uh, in a moment, uh, we will take a look at the uh, financial markets, how they close the day. Just a quick reminder first, though, of today's headlines. Back to you, Jane. Jamie. Jamie, thank, Jamie you. thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Giles Thatcher reporting that. We will uh, leave you with a look at the weekend weather prospects. We'll get all the latest details from Darren Bett.